Retina Rounds, episode number 64. What is the vitreous base? In today's episode, we'll cover the anatomy of the vitreous and vitreous base that every vitreoretinal surgeon should understand. I want to give a special credit to my late mentor, Dr. Alan Buzz Krieger, for the images and slides presented in this episode. The information presented here is based on his monumental work, along with collaborators, Drs. Robert Foose and Bradley Stratzma. First, we'll start with some basic anatomy of the anterior retina. In this image, from left to right, we have the ciliary processes followed by the pars plana and ciliary epithelium. This, of course, is the safe access point into the vitreous cavity, which is posterior to the ciliary body and lens, but anterior to the retina. Next, we have the aura serrata, which is the anterior most extension of the retina. You can see some tooth-like extensions of the retina into the pars plana, which are called dentate processes. The scalloped areas between the dentate processes are called aura bays. The vitreous base straddles the aura serrata, it extends approximately two millimeters anterior and posterior to the aura serrata, and its location is shown in this diagram between the light green dashed lines. The collagen fibers of the vitreous are integrated with the underlying retina and ciliary epithelium and cannot be detached from these underlying structures at the vitreous base. During a vitrectomy, an induced PVD extends to the posterior margin of the vitreous base. While the vitreous can be removed posterior to the vitreous base, the vitreous overlying the vitreous base cannot be removed and must be trimmed or shaved with a vitreous cutter. Evaluation of vitreous base pathology is best performed with indirect ophthalmoscopy with the assistance of scleral depression. This video demonstrates the view during indirect ophthalmoscopy with scleral depression. The depressor is moved in an anteroposterior fashion, bringing into view the aura serrata and the anterior retina within the vitreous base. It's important to remember that the vitreous base is like a donut or a ring that straddles the aura serrata 360 degrees. Placement of an encircling buckle, for example, is intended to indent the eye at the location of the vitreous base. That's what's meant by using a scleral buckle to support the vitreous base. A buckle in this location can decrease traction at the base and therefore can decrease traction of the vitreous at the vitreous base on adjacent retinal breaks. The width of the pars plana and the vitreous base is different in different quadrants. Temporally, the pars plana is wider and the extension of the vitreous base onto the anterior retina is narrower as shown on the temporal side of this diagram marked T. The speckled area marked P indicates the posterior extension of the vitreous base. You'll see that nasally the pars plana is narrower and the posterior extension of the vitreous base is wider. That's seen at the left side of the diagram. 98 to 99% of the vitreous body is composed of water. Type 2 collagen fibers give the vitreous body some structure and hyaluronic acid gives the vitreous body a gel-like consistency. Vitreous is also composed of proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and hyalocytes. The vitreous has numerous adhesion points and again is integrated with the underlying retina and pars plana epithelium at the vitreous base shown by the red arrow. Tight adhesions are also present over the optic nerve, the green arrow, at the posterior lens capsule, the so-called Weger ligament shown by the blue arrow, and over the macula and retinal vessels. This autopsy eye shows the vitreous of a child which is semi-solid and adherent to the retina. You can see with the eye hung upside down that the vitreous maintains its adhesions to the posterior retina. As we age, the vitreous begins to form liquefied lacunae, as shown in this autopsy eye. This is termed vitreous cineresis. Eventually, liquefied vitreous begins to dissect the posterior hyaloid away from the retina, resulting in a posterior vitreous detachment. Here's an autopsy eye with the posterior vitreous detachment. You can see eye with the eye hung upside down that the vitreous has pulled away from the retina but maintains its integration with the anterior retina and pars plana at the vitreous base. Here's a schematic of the vitreous base, base which again straddles the aura serrata. Vitreous extends posteriorly over the retinal surface and anteriorly over the ciliary body and lens. In cases of proliferative vitreoretinopathy, the vitreous base may contract, resulting in anteroposterior and circumferential traction on the ciliary body, which can result in hypotony. The lens capsule and the vitreous adherent to it can serve as a framework upon which anterior PVR may form, and is the reason why the lens capsule may be removed in patients with PVR to decrease the risk of anterior base contraction, resulting in hypotony. Typically, the posterior base has a regular shape that runs roughly parallel to the aura serrata. The posterior base is shown in this diagram as a speckled area that's posterior to the scalloped edge of the aura serrata. 
However, the base may also have an irregular border as is shown here. Incidentally, white with and without pressure re reflects the visualization of the vitreous base, which is caused by a light reflection from the integrating pattern of collagen fibers to the underlying retina. When you see white with or without pressure, you may have noticed that the posterior edge sometimes has a regular or an irregular posterior border. And this demonstrates the variability in the posterior extension of the vitreous base. Retinal breaks may form at irregular posterior extensions of the vitreous base, as is shown here. This schematic shows the location of juxtabasal retinal breaks marked A and B. A more posterior break, letter C, shows vitreous adhesions on the retinal break that extends to the vitreous base. When performing a scleral buckle or a vitrectomy for a retinal detachment, the surgical goal is to relieve the traction of the vitreous base and vitreous on the retinal break. With scleral buckling, this is achieved by indenting the outer wall of the eye, and with vitrectomy, it's achieved by lysing vitreous adhesions from the retinal break and shaving the base. Here's an autopsy eye showing a juxtabasal retinal tear, and another eye, autopsy eye showing the same. Here's an autopsy eye hung upside down, showing traction of the vitreous at the posterior edge of the vitreous base, causing multiple retinal breaks. It's important to distinguish juxtabasal breaks, which are typically seen with a posterior vitreous detachment, from an intrabasal break, which is shown here. Retinal dialysis detachments are associated with intrabasal breaks and are not typically associated with a PVD. They're usually seen in younger patients and may be associated with ocular trauma. Here's another autopsy eye with an intrabasal retinal break at the aura serrata. Retinal dialysis detachments from intrabasal breaks have a very high success rate when treated with a scleral buckle. Vitrectomy in these eyes is generally not the ideal method of surgical management. This is unlike a PVD-associated retinal detachment, where either a pneumatic retinopexy, scleral buckle, vitrectomy, or combination buckle and vitrectomy may be chosen based on the patient's clinical features and surgeon preference. So in summary, the vitreous base is an annulus of vitreous that straddles the aura serrata and extends approximately two millimeters posteriorly over the anterior retina and two millimeters anteriorly over the pars plane epithelium. The key point is that the vitreous is integrated with the underlying tissue at the vitreous base. The vitreous here cannot be surgically removed and, and traction at this location can only be relieved through scleral buckling or by using a vitrector to shave the vitreous at the vitreous base. Lastly, understanding the relationship between a retinal break and the vitreous base can guide surgical management. Retinal dialysis detachments associated with intrabasal breaks, which are typically proximal to the aura serrata, are best treated with scleral buckling, whereas a variety of treatment options can be considered for juxtabasal retinal detachments, which are typically associated with the PVD. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.